All right, so uh, great. So we have pretty much all the stability notions that we require covered. Yeah, pretty quick. Yeah, uh, once you understand, like I said, stability, uniform stability, attractivity, you are more or less done. All the other notions are just you know sort of combinations of one or the other of the two. Yeah, and you sort of understand how to strengthen them. Yeah, you don't have to necessarily remember the sequence and all that. Once if the first strengthening is imparting uniformity, which is independence or with respect to initial time, and then the second strengthening is sort of uh, uh, you know giving some kind of a global property, which is basically removing bounds on initial conditions. Okay, so initial x zero, if it's unbounded, or that is you can allow for any initial condition, then you have global properties. All right, simple, great. And and this is very critical for nonlinear systems, of course. For linear systems, this is irrelevant. Global properties and local properties are all the same. Yeah, there's no difference between local and global for linear systems. Um, uniformity is obviously there. If you are talking about time-varying linear systems, you still have to talk about uniformity. Okay. So again, the other thing to also remember is that if your system uh, right-hand side, that is f, yeah, we we talk about systems of the form x dot equal to f t x, right? If this f here is independent of time, there is no time explicitly appearing on the right hand side, then the system is uniform for free. There is no uniformity to be considered separately. Okay? So these few things always remember, linear systems, local, global, no difference. If the system right hand side function that is vector field has no explicit time argument, why do I keep saying explicit? Because the states themselves are functions of time when you solve them and all that. But if time is not explicitly appearing in these expressions, then the system is time invariant or autonomous. Yeah, uh, These words are used exchangeably for continuous systems. Yeah, um, So then uniformity is free, you do not have to evaluate separately. If you obtain global asymptotic stability, you have obtained global uniform asymptotic stability. Okay? All right. Excellent. So, just keep these in mind. Now, we sort of go to these examples, right? these interesting examples that sort of give us uh, different funny cases if you may. Yeah. So, this is exactly the question that you asked, a system which is attractive but not stable. Yeah. This is the system. <laughs> yeah. Um, unfortunately, you cannot solve this by hand at all, Yeah. And no analytical solution, but uh, the phase plane plots look like this. Okay. So, this is x1 dot, this is x2 dot, uh, this is the system, I mean you can uh, think of it as some kind of a constructed system I guess, alright, but well it exists. So, yeah. So, so the phase plane plot like I said is just a plot between the two states in this case, uh, x1 on one axis and x2 on the other axis. So, there is a sort of a bifurcation in this system that is a, a inside this blue sort of a uh, you know aerofoil type shape, um, all the system trajectories look like this. Okay. So, how do you make the phase plane plot? It is very standard in MATLAB, Python and so on. You basically give a bunch of initial conditions and you look at how those initial conditions evolve. So, in this case if you start an initial condition here, it will evolve along this like this. So, you get an idea of what is a phase plane curve. So, uh, in fact, in MATLAB you have standard um, hmm, functions which will directly make phase plane by automatically randomly, randomly initiate initializing and then they will just directly make the phase plane plot for you uh, for several cases. So, so the basic idea is this system is such that any initial condition inside this uh, sort of uh, bifurcation will have this kind of a shape. Okay, they will all look like this and if your initial conditions are outside, then the trajectories look like this. Okay. So, if you start outside, trajectories look like this. Okay. So, the interesting thing to see is it is attractive right? because it is wherever you start you are always getting to the origin. right? If you start inside, outside it does not matter. 
is going to just do this and go or it's going to do this and go it doesn't matter it's going to the origin wherever you start okay so attractive in fact you can even claim global attractivity in this case yeah i don't know about uniform well i guess it's uniform for free no time argument on the right hand side right so it is uniform so in fact it is globally uniformly attractive and probably the best attractivity property you can imagine right but it's not stable why absolutely look at this uh, if you give me any epsilon ball okay any epsilon ball around the equilibrium origin in this case right you make an epsilon ball like this i have actually made the ball very specifically for that you make the epsilon ball yeah then you cannot uh, remain in this epsilon ball for any delta ball why because any delta ball will definitely have initial conditions outside this guy right if your initial conditions well actually it doesn't even matter it's outside actually yeah, it doesn't matter if it's outside or inside yeah there is no initial condition which will remain inside the epsilon ball okay they will always go out like this yeah if epsilon is like this now if i of course if i make a very large epsilon let's see uh, we'll let's see that case also uh, all right great i made this epsilon ball now okay now what does this work ha huh? definitely okay unclear if this works or not but there is a hope that it might work because if i take i mean but potentially i could take really small delta like this so that the trajectory that's see the inside trajectories are not a problem this sector trajectory is not a problem because they will remain inside this wing and i deliberately made epsilon larger right but any trajectory starting here has to go around this now i don't know if it will remain inside this or not but the point is if i make this delta really tiny i'm sure it's going to hug this very closely and then not escape this circle okay so there is a possibility of finding a delta but that is not the stability question right the stability challenge is that you give me any epsilon and i can give you a delta yeah so for large epsilon yeah seems like great working but for small epsilon no okay so it so then it's that's it i don't have to do anything further if it doesn't work for even one particular choice of epsilon that you give me system is not stable okay so system is not stable but it is attractive okay all right then there are these simple nice examples like this pendulum yeah the non linear pendulum the actual pendulum it has a, it has a equation that looks like this right and uh, I, i don't have to actually uh, do anything to prove that this is uh, asymptotically stable you, you can just i mean i can prove it um, not by solving it difficult to solve the system also just because of the sinusoid uh, you will not be able to analytically solve it yeah but you can just look at the movement of a pendulum you know that it is attractive yeah because of this uh, damping term this damping will come usually from the friction on friction in the pivot point so if you make any pendulum move it's going to stop at the bottom right so it's attractive yeah the bottom position that is theta equal to 0 is an attractive equilibrium right and stability is actually rather easy in this case yeah um, in the sense that uh, i can guess it yeah but again i cannot analytically solve it yeah although this system looks so simple still i'll not be able to analytically solve it to get stability how i would get stability is by linearizing yeah i would linearize this this will become x2 dot is minus x1 minus k x2 around x1 close to x1 equal to 0 near x1 equal to 0 this becomes x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is minus x1 minus k x2 okay so that is uh, actually near x1 equal to 0 if i linearize i will get x1 dot is x2 in uh, and well x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to 0 and x2 dot is minus x1 minus k x2 and of course k is positive so this is a stable system right 
this is in fact a uh, asymptotically stable system but it's definitely stable okay so uh, this is one of the methods that i don't discuss in this course but uh, it is possible to um, get or obtain local properties of a nonlinear system by linearizing the nonlinear system and obtaining the linear system and looking at its corresponding uh, stability so if you linearize a nonlinear system and the linearization is stable the nonlinear system is locally stable linearization is asymptotically stable nonlinear system is locally asymptotically stable yeah why i don't discuss these this particular method is because this method does not tell you how local is local it just tells you that if the linearization is asymptotically stable nonlinear system is locally asymptotically stable it doesn't tell you how local it doesn't tell you the delta in those definitions okay and a lot of times you need to know those okay i mean if you are especially wanting to operate such systems you actually want the value of that the basin of attraction that it's called yeah so khalil uses this word a lot a uh, basin of attraction basically it's the delta in the attractivity definition okay so we need to know that in a lot of cases which is why i don't talk about that method here but anyway for this particular illustration it's okay so this is an asymptotically stable system yeah local yeah not global okay not global because the inverted there's an inverted position that is uh, x1 equal to pi which is also an equilibrium 0 0 is an equilibrium pi 0 is also an equilibrium right for this system okay so the pi 0 equilibrium is unstable okay we are not talking about but so if you are talking about stability of this equilibrium it is only local because there is another equilibrium okay so whenever a system has multiple equilibria you cannot claim global properties okay it is just like optimization right so well in optimization you still can right because you say uh, if you have multiple uh, minima you just find the least minima in the entire domain and you say that is the global optimizer right here you don't have any such thing here if you have multiple equilibria then you can't say that uh, any of them is global because an equilibria itself means that you never move from there so this inverted position if you start here and there is no disturbance and obviously idealized system if it start here and there is no disturbance then this is a trajectory which does not converge to the zero zero point yeah there is actually a trajectory right because pi comma zero is an equilibrium so if i start at this pi comma zero i remain at pi comma zero because the right hand side becomes zero right so i don't move from there so this is a trajectory for all time i remain here yeah so my property cannot be global right because if i start right here i don't converge here and global requires that for every initial condition i should be able to reach the equilibrium right in this case that's not happening so whenever you have multiple equilibria it's virtually impossible to say that it's a whatever you have achieved is a global property okay all right makes sense so what most people do is they try to say that okay there are some uh, you have this equilibria but it is an unstable equilibria therefore in reality you will never actually stay here and so on okay which is true right i mean if you take a pendulum even if you start here you will never stay here right i mean however much your damping is even if it's slightly slightly off from this which it will be in the real world uh, you will go back to the uh, zero zero equilibrium okay but it is not global okay sadly okay so remember that not global property all right this system is globally asymptotically stable for sigma positive very easy just solve it yeah this is easy to solve this is what you have you get this this is the solution yeah believe me this is the solution yeah i checked okay so uh, this you can see that as t goes to infinity what happens this this term is going to go to infinity so this entire thing is going to go to zero 
so attractivity is guaranteed uh, i have to prove stability but yeah i mean yeah it is stable uh, i i guess i have asked that as a example oh, okay yeah nice that's an exercise to prove stability yeah because attractivity is obvious right i mean you don't have to do any work at all yeah but stability you might have to do a little 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 bit of work okay okay so that's an exercise here you have to prove that this is globally asymptotically stable hmm? again i say only globally asymptotically stable because uniformity is free right hand side is independent of time okay so no need to evaluate uniform if i say gas it is guas all right okay good so this is a, of course i sort of wanted to give an example of uh, non uniform asymptotic stability also all right so you can have such examples also so all i do is i sort of introduce a function of time here yeah if this was one if this was one just think about it this is just a linear damped oscillator right so spring mass damper if this was one so but but all i did was i introduced some time varying quantity here and it so happens that the solutions look like this i mean so i mean it turns out that it is non uniform asymptotic stable okay so basically you don't have uniformity in this case in a lot of these cases it's uh, not uh very easy as you can see to solve them and so on you, if you look at this this is just a linear system by the way yeah linear time varying system so as soon as you go from a linear time invariant system to a linear time varying system your life becomes pretty complicated already yeah you don't even have to go to non linear i mean what i would say is linear time varying systems are sometimes harder to analyze than non linear systems non linear autonomous systems okay so doesn't make your life significantly simpler or anything yeah so even to evaluate a uh, non uniformity using uh, these definitions would be rather difficult rather difficult okay any questions hmm hmm if you have a single unique equilibrium point for a nonlinear system your question is does it does asymptotic stability guarantee global asymptotic stability i would say no hmm? no no doesn't you can have a case where you don't converge to that equilibrium also far away from the origin you don't get to the origin yeah i don't think this can be uh, said in general that if you have asymptotic stability of global asymptotic stability for a nonlinear system just because you have one equilibrium okay uh, if you ask me for a, such an example uh, i will struggle a little bit uh, yeah i'll have to think okay i'll have to think i think a version of this vanderpol oscillator might be such an example hmm? yeah i have to sort of think about it yeah there may be a version of a vanderpol oscillator which will which uh sort of does exactly what i'm saying that it doesn't do it's it's almost like this uh, in fact if you look at this system yeah um Well, this is still nice inside and outside in both places it is converging to the origin but you might have some kind of a bifurcation which uh, beyond which it doesn't converge to the origin but inside it does yeah so non linear systems can exhibit a very very wide variety of behavior so i i cannot claim that in general if you say asymptotic stability then in, essentially we are saying asymptotic stability implies global asymptotic stability more or less right that no no i wouldn't have any reason to make a separate definition no escape velocity is slightly different um because i see you, you are talking about escape velocity in terms of launches like in terms of launching and stuff yeah i understand what you're saying maybe yeah 
मे बी दैट काइंड ऑफ अ मॉडल येस इफ यू थिंक ऑफ अ रॉकेट दैट यू आर ट्राइंग टू राइट इक्वेजन फॉर एंड देन यू हैव ग्रेविटी एक्टिंग ऑन इट सो देर इज एन एस्केप वेलासिटी इफ इट्स सो बेसिकली इफ वन ऑफ द स्टेट्स इज टू लार्ज देन यू डोंट कम बैक एंड फॉल इन टू द ग्राउंड बट इफ यूर वेलासिटी इज स्मॉलर देन दिस पर्टिकुलर नंबर वन ऑफ द स्टेट्स इज स्मॉल देन यू डू कम बैक या या मे बी इफ आई मॉडल इट appropriately <laughs> it will probably exhibit this behavior so the model i mean i'm i'm wondering the model also has to exhibit this behavior physically yes absolutely yeah physically yes so yeah i mean you can always uh, i mean if you can think of it then you can model it so i guess you can have such an example also yeah so nonlinear systems very very wide variety of uh, behaviors you cannot uh, say that in general okay all right any other questions okay good uh, this is one of the simplest examples of course right this is the uh, global exponential stability this is a linear system right like i said linear system uh, linear time invariant system especially it's like uh, exponential stability is uh, uh, sorry any stability is exponential stability okay nothing less than that speed whatever very fast uh but again linear time varying systems that may not be the case huh? so it's a very fragile sort of a thing which works only for linear systems and not more all right so like i said for linear systems in general uh uniform asymptotic stability and exponential stability uh, are also the same are the same yeah so there's no difference really um in fact how do you evaluate it you just look at the matrix eigen values and so on and so forth yeah i mean it's pretty simple all of you understand how to do it you can also do the lyapunov tests and all this um, usual things that we have been doing but you don't have to but but we will look at those conditions yeah uh, in order to look at those conditions we have sort of re redefined these uh, matrix norm notions but i'm not going to repeat them i believe you already know them yeah just the notion of the induced norm repeated here then how to evaluate some induced norms again repeated here just the formula and then these inequalities which are yeah which are just the induced norm inequality right this inequality is coming from the induced norm definition itself right because induced norm is the supremum yeah therefore ax divided norm ax divided by norm x is always greater than norm a okay because it's the supremum right so for all values of x norm ax divided by norm x has to be greater than equal to norm of a i hope that is evident right because sup is basically a extension of the maximum right and that is how you get this okay did i did i say this correctly i said it the other way around <laughs> sorry from here you have norm of a is always greater than equal to norm ax divided by norm x yeah just by virtue of the fact that i took a supremum here yeah from here i get this sorry i said it the other way around yeah so just the norm inequality induced norm inequality and this is the cauchy schwarz like inequality like that we sort of proved for general vector spaces last time okay so when do we say that okay this is a little bit of proof so anyway ah that's fine so one of the conditions for stability is this guy for linear system so this is a general uh, time varying linear system okay uh with with some initial condition because i have time dependence so therefore my initial condition is also at a particular initial time not necessarily zero all right so the condition for stability is something like this okay basically what is this notation i hope all of you know this notation this um phi capital phi by the way is the state transition matrix yeah or the fundamental matrix whatever you want to say yeah uh, and and you also know that the solution 
at any time can be written as in this way yeah this is how you use the state transition matrix in fact uh, the state transition matrix describes the flow for the linear system yeah because it tells you how you map the if you fix the t it tells you how you map initial conditions right different initial conditions i can take different initial condition i keep multiplying with phi i get a flow yeah how I, how my initial conditions are getting mapped okay so this is just a you know, linear equivalent of whatever the flow yeah in fact that's why you see the similar notation getting used there it was a small phi here it is a capital phi yeah uh, so what we say is the condition for stability is that the norm of this matrix is bounded by some function of initial time okay 